ce que nous avons à bâtir aujourd'hui, parce que c'est le bon moment, parce que c'est ce qu'il faut pour notre nation et parce que les conditions sont maintenant réunies, c'est la renaissance du nucléaire français. In 2022, French President Emmanuel Macron announced that his country will build up to 40 new nuclear fission reactors by 2050. France is also betting big on nuclear fusion, the same process that powers the sun. Recently, the Straits Times got to see that bet in real life. This is the assembly hall where they are building a machine that generates energy the same way that the sun does. This giant structure behind me is one part of what will become the world's largest tokamak reactor. I'm Cheryl Tan and I'm at the south of France at the ITER facility, a multinational, multi-decade, multi-billion dollar effort to build the world's largest nuclear fusion reactor. At the tail end of the Cold War, US President Ronald Reagan and Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev signed an agreement to develop fusion power as a cheap, environmentally sound and essentially inexhaustible energy source for the benefit of all mankind. More than 30 years on, seven member countries of ITA are working hard here in this 180 hectare site in the south of France to realise this fusion dream. In nuclear fission, a large atom is split into two or more smaller atoms. It powers all existing nuclear plants in the world. Nuclear fusion is when two lighter atoms merge together to form a heavier one. The fusion reaction uses deuterium and tritium as fuels. Both are isotopes of hydrogen, itself readily available on Earth in seawater, making it an attractive option to realise a carbon-free future for the world. However, no one has been able to maintain the reaction long enough to produce any meaningful amount of energy. This giant machine will hopefully change that. A tokamak is an experimental machine that is designed to conduct and harness the energy produced from a fusion reaction. Using powerful magnetic fields, it confines hot ionized gas, or plasma, to generate the fusion reaction. Nuclear fusion is well defined and we can do that very easily and many tokamaks do that but the beauty here is that we will produce more fusion out, more power out than we put power in. Do as you make the particles go faster and faster. Initially when they're going slow they will come towards each other and avoid but as they go faster they will collide and when they collide you create nuclear fusion. The centerpiece of ITER is a giant donut shaped tokamak. While not the first in the world, it will certainly be the largest when completed. At 23,000 tonnes, it is heavier than three Eiffel Towers and it is capable of holding 840 cubic metres of plasma. For perspective, Europe's JET and Japan's JT-60SA had only been able to hold around 90 and 160 cubic metres of plasma respectively. So this is my sixth fusion device working on. And each of these devices has got bigger in size. And the absolute attraction and importance about ITER is that it's really the first machine that's at the size where we can reasonably get break even. And we are counting on Q equals 10, which means we get 10 times more power out than we put in on ITER. The Lofty project has seen delays and big cost overruns. The tokamak was originally supposed to fire the symbolic first plasma in 2024 and full research operations to start in 2035. This has now been delayed to 2039. In a press conference in July 2024, Director General Pietro Barabaski said the delay could cause a baseline of 5 billion euros. As strange as it may sound, it's very difficult for me to tell you exactly what is the total cost and if I give a number, normally I like to have very good grounds to give this number. And the reason for that is that the large, to the largest extent, that was funded in kind. So there were a few years that uh, we are, uh, say, estimated a few years ago, where the total cost of it would be around 20 billion uh, euro. Uh, so my expectation is that now, of course, this will increase. 15 minutes down the road from ITA, at the CEA Cataract, research is also being done that will hopefully be useful in ITA's tokamak. 
Once you get to fusion power inside the, the core of the plasma, then you will have to extract the heat and the particles. And as they are very energetic, there is a high heat flux. You have to have components which sustain this heat and which can evacuate the particle. So what we are studying here is how you can collect this heat and how you can collect the particles and keeping the plasma alive without polluting the plasma and without destroying the components. It is here where Singapore's small contribution to the fusion dream can be found. I am in charge of a joint research center between NTU and CA, whose name is SAFE, Safe for a Singapore Alliance with France for Fusion Energy. And we are in charge of uh, preparing Singapore for maybe one day operate a fusion reactor in Singapore when it, the technology is ready. The fusion plasma is very high temperature, 100 million degrees, and it tends to be highly unstable. So you have to control it uh, real time. So what we're doing is that we are computing or modeling the, the fusion plasma uh, and we use AI, artificial intelligence, so the skills developed in NTU, in Singapore, to produce models, uh, to model the plasma. And with this, the plan is to devise control schemes, right? That is a way to control the plasma and make sure it is stable. With fusion many years away from being viable, France is still going to rely on conventional nuclear fission for some time to come. Under former President François Hollande, France decided to reduce their reliance on nuclear energy. A target was set to reduce nuclear's contribution to their energy mix to just 50% by 2025. But facing ever-rising energy needs and energy costs due to the volatility of natural gas prices, this policy was reversed under Emmanuel Macron. This move was criticised by green groups. We should focus on energy savings. Why energy savings? Because it gives you immediate result for at almost no cost. We should put our money, our resources in order building a proper renewable infrastructure. We are lucky in France because we have sun, we have wind, we have mountains, we have everything and we should benefit of it. Despite the opposition, 70% of France's energy mix still comes from nuclear power. According to a survey done in 2021, around 50% of French people view nuclear energy as an asset, as nuclear power has been able to give France energy independence and provide people with low electricity costs. When the war in Ukraine started, uh, the electricity pr prices started to rise, and uh, so we saw more people concerned about uh, the energy, uh, to, to have like independent energy sources, and not relying to other countries. The problem is that we have centrales qui faut qui sont beaucoup qui ont été beaucoup en maintenance et euh, voilà et ça a pu poser problème, je sais plus je crois sur 55 centrales, il y en avait 25 qui étaient en maintenance pendant le en pleine guerre euh, euh, russo-ukrainienne et c'était problématique parce que euh, voilà, les les gens râlaient mais voilà, c'est ce qui a permis qu'on ait une électricité qui soit euh, fiable, euh, pas chère et décarboné aussi. Voilà. Comparé à d'autres euh, sources d'énergie, euh, eh bien, euh, il reste seul le nucléaire qui paraît le plus sain pour les deux cas de figure, pour l'homme et la planète. So we need public support for the long term and we need political support as well. Uh, because in France now, the, the, the sh shift or change in, uh, in the politics, uh, for our, our president is changing every five years. In five years, is really too short. Mm -hmm.